Welcome back to another video by an NZ Trading. In this one, I thought I'd just take you through a little bit of how I would go about wiring a switchboard. So I've got myself a main switch, RCD, couple of MCBs for the RCD, and a couple of MCBs which we'll call non-RCD loads of some description. So I thought I'd just go through, I'd wire what I've got here, I'll talk about some of the rules that I know and um, different ways I go about things and why, and you can pick up what you like and different things that you might not know. But yeah, let's get started. We quite commonly have a two pole main switch, which the mains, which this is my little mains cable, will come in on. And then it would go to say a meter and a combination board or something like that. So we'll just have our, uh, I'll loop this in here and out again and we'll just uh, pretend that that's got a meter in it. Uh, in a combination board that's most common how we would do it. So then you've got a main switch that will isolate the meter and also the switchboard at the same time without having two main switches. So I'll skip forwards and backwards a bit um, just as I get stuff wired so that you're not uh, watching me strip cables up the whole time. So then we'd have our main switch in here. You've got your neutral off to a neutral bar also with your meter neutral going to the meter. If you didn't have a combination board, then you could just have a single pole main switch and it would just feed straight through, either top or bottom. Now, when you start a switchboard, I generally like to make sure that uh, you're feeding it all the same way. So I'm gonna top feed my breakers, which does mean later on, um, I'll have to loop round and bottom feed my RCD so that my MCBs all stay top fed which I'll show you when we get to. So next thing I would do is I would grab a piece of comb, like this, bus bar, comb, whatever you want to call it, and I uh, you snip the spits off. It's going to be three bars long. And then I like to use a bit of tape. Some people um, depress the edges like this, which is okay too. But the thing you want to make sure is that when your comb is sitting in here, the next person that comes along that this hasn't moved over like that and then they've got quite a large live piece pointing out. So generally, I'll grab a bit of tape. This is what I tell my apprentices to do as well. Just run the tape brown twice or however many times you feel like on the day, it doesn't really matter, but that's just gonna keep that plastic nice and secure on there. So I'll just pull the board down a bit. Now this is the Mosquito screw gun. It's not an impact driver. It's not nearly as strong as an impact driver. Um, so I rattle them all up with this, makes it quick, and then I'll come through with my torque screwdriver afterwards and uh, talk them up to the spec. So now that we've got our MCBs fed, let's say mm, let's say that this 20 amps an AC and this one's a hob. For these ones here, you then get your uh, six mil or 2.5 or whatever, feed the reds out, they go out to the circuit, and then your uh, neutrals are going to come to the neutral bar and earths to the earth bar. Okay, so as you can see, we've wired up our two imaginary circuits. We've got our AC coming into here and our hob coming into here. So generally on a switchboard that has all the cables in it, I would suggest stripping up every cable 
And a good way that I like to do it is you make a little crimp in the uh, outer insulation and then you peel up to that point and that gives you a nice pulling point and it just snaps it off like you would have seen me do. Then you'd come down, you'd feed all your, all your earths along and then you'd go neutral and phase. Generally I'd go together. So neutral goes in here, phase goes in here, neutral goes in here, phase goes in here. Otherwise, if you do all the phases, then you spend a lot of time looking back and trying to find which neutral goes where. Because when you come to an RCD circuit, it does matter. The neutral has to be on the RCD uh, load side neutral. If you don't put it on the right RCD, you'll have this RCD tripping and another RCD tripping. So when it comes to feeding an RCD, we want to have our top of our MCBs as the feed. So that means we need to feed the bottom of the RCD and then we'll come up to the top and have a comb going straight across these four, which means our circuits are still going to be in the bottom of the MCBs like before. So we need a neutral in here and a phase in here from, uh, from the feed phase and from the neutral bar. And we'll also put a comb in the top of there. You can see I use a bunch of different tools for uh, different things, and I'm not one of those people that is like, you have to be, out, you have to strip everything with pliers because that's how I did it when I learnt. Um, I think it is worthwhile knowing how to strip with your pliers and your sliders and all those things. But at the end of the day, when we're trying to do a job, I want you to do it fairly quick using a pair of these. I prefer you use strippers because they are quicker um, and you do less mistakes than I would be so anal that I want you to go and use your pliers because that's what everybody has to use and I'm going to laugh at you or some crap like that. So as much as possible you want to avoid having those copper sprags sitting out the bottom. You want to have it nice and flush like this, no copper sticking out. So see the other side, no copper sticking out. So we're just going to give that a little finesse so that that copper is not going to come out and we can just trim those off with our side cutters. And sweet as, and we're going to poke this in underneath which it is on the short side unfortunately that's a pain I'm gonna to have to use that somewhere else so one of the main things you want to make sure that you are being careful of is when you put the comb in you want to make sure that your cable gets nicely squashed up behind can you see how wonky they sit and if I try and force this correct the bar sits on such an angle Whereas if I reverse this how I had it originally, now you can see it sits nice and even. And so it's important to make sure your comb is on the side of the MCB that isn't going to pull in. So this is the flat side and this part of the terminal pulls it into it. So we're just going to do that up here, which you won't be able to quite see. Always try and give it the old tug test, just make sure it's in good. So now we have our mains in our non rcd MCBs fed and our circuits fed and we also have our RCD and rcd MCBs fed also. So now we're going to get a neutral. Now the feed is here so the power is going in this side so we also need our feed neutral on this side. If you have these two swapped it will also trip the RCD which is a common thing when you start. To, uh, you turn your board on, you've wired it all up and your RCD trips immediately. Those two being transposed could be one of the causes. Okay, so we've got our feed neutral in and now we're going to get our RCD neutral. Now there's two ways you can go about this, or three. You could shove all the neutrals in the top of there, which I don't advise. It gets messy and doesn't look great. You can also get this little wee bar with three terminals on it that goes in the top of the neutral and then you'd put your three cables in because you are only allowed three protected circuits per RCD or you feed it down to what you'd call a RCD bar so I would call this RCD bar one there would usually be lots of little four studded RCD bars um, but this board's been robbed because it's a second hand board and 
I'm using it for this. So we're just going to call this the RCD bar here just on its own. One of the other things that I was just thinking about is uh, speed and efficiency. So yes, you want your switchboards to look nice and yes, uh, the nicer it is, the easier it is for the next electrician. But there is a fine line. I think that the switchboard so far is looking all right. I've spent 22 minutes, including talking to you guys about it. And I'd say that that's fairly easy to follow. My cables are all in nice straight lines. Um, I would probably zip tie the neutrals together and the earth together so that you could pull the neutrals out on their own. But there's a fine line. If you spent an hour on a switchboard and it looked pretty good, I'd be happy. If you spent six hours on a switchboard and it looked amazing, I would be saying, look, you're taking too much time mucking around with your cables and stuff that shouldn't take you that long. So there is a fine line between what you should and shouldn't expect out of a switchboard. Now, that doesn't mean make it a bird's nest, because I see a lot of those, but, you know, somewhere in the middle ground is where you want to be. So now we're just going to wire our one mill up. Now, interestingly enough, for quite a long time, uh, we became under the assumption that you had to use at least four mil in a switchboard. Um, but actually, looking more recently, I've found that that's incorrect. The regs only specify that you can't use one mil and that 2.5 is the minimum size you could use. Now, you could use uh, 2.5 everywhere, but I wouldn't suggest that. Um, you might as well just use four mil or six mil, to be honest. And why would you not want to be uh, more safe than sorry? The reason you could use two mil everywhere is because in a switchboard, a cable is able to be rated at five times its current carrying capacity. So, you know, 2.5 is, is good for quite a bit of amps. Um, but I wouldn't loop 2.5 round to everything. I would suggest a four mil from the main switch to your first RCD and maybe a second, and then another four mil to your other RCD, and then something like a, a, um, a bus bar or comb for your MCDs. So you can see that fitting off into the RCD is exactly the same so far as fitting off into an MCD that's not RCD'd. RCD protected. The only difference is going to be when we feed this neutral. This neutral doesn't go on this on this neutral bar and if you put it there again your RCD will trip. It needs to come around to the RCD bar and so we'll bring it around here generally speaking fold them over but again, that's completely up to you whether you want to fold them over or not. Depending on your area, your inspector might be uh, might want something in particular and most of the time if that's what they want, you do have to more or less adhere to that. But that's fine, it's not that big a deal. My cable's just become a little messy because it was a little short on that neutral. So this neutral here, now on this RCD bar, and you do the same for the two fives in here and here. You can do any combination of MCBs here. It could be 16, 16, 16, 20, 20, 20, 666, whatever. Um, you have to downrate your cables, hence why I've done a 16, 16, and 6. So I'm downrating two 2.5s and a 1 mil because of uh, insulation. If you run cables through insulation, you've got to downrate them, which means you've got to put them on a 16s and 6s in your houses, just in case you didn't realize. Now there's a couple of other scenarios I want to talk about. We quite often put these slimline breakers in. So these are DL, we order them online. Um, but we come along and we put a lot of solar gear in a switchboard. Usually can take up to sort of nine or 12 spots. And so if we needed some room, we can come in and we can swap two breakers for the size of one. And that frees up a lot of room. The frustrating thing though is that you can't get a comb that fits in them. So you've got to do a lot of little loops. That can be annoying. So that's just something to uh, 
watch out for. Also, they don't click on the bar. You've got to push these little tabs down, put them on, push the tabs back in to lock them on. Here is another kind of RCD, just fairly standard. It is not an RCBO. An easy way to tell whether it is an RCBO or not. This is an RCBO. It has got a max KA rating. If an RCD, if it doesn't have a max KA rating, it's not an RCBO, it's an RCD. That's like one easy way to tell. In New Zealand, it needs to be um, AC and DC pulsating, which is there. And then you've got your amps and your milliamp ratings. Uh, different for different scenarios. Generally in a domestic installation, you're looking for a 30 milliamp. In hospitals or kindergartens, it's gotta be 10. Um, another little thing to do with combs as well, is if you've got lots of different MCB types in a board, which is pretty common in New Zealand, you can't just whack a comb in it anymore, unfortunately. Because, See that? They all sit at different heights. So if I was to pull this to the uh, right level, your comb is all out of whack. Now here is a perfect example of what can actually happen. This was not because of a, um, a bus bar or a comb like this. It was actually a loose terminal. But you can see here, it can get pretty bad pretty quick. So it's completely melted out all the side of the MCB. And obviously it's not going to work anymore and it's ruined the stuff next to it as well. So it just goes to show that it is actually pretty important to make sure that your connections are good in your MCBs. So this is another style of RCBO, so it's a two pole one opposed to the single pole one here. You can tell it's got its KA rating there, two poles, but multiple different types of um, RCDs and RCBOs, they're all a little different and so it pays to make sure that you know your terminal depths and things like that and your torque levels. Okay, so last couple of things to touch on before I finish. Um, probably most importantly because we don't actually have mains coming into here is the main situation for the earth and neutral. Both the earth and neutral need to be on their own bars under a double stud. The earth needs an earth tag or earth label. They look like this. You fold it in half and you thread the wire through and it would just sit in your board like this somewhere. That lets you know that that is the main earth, don't disconnect it. And also on the front of your lab on the front of your board you need to label the main earth is located outside the lounge window or wherever it is. You need a MEN link, so you need a link from here to here on the two bars. It can be a minimum of 6mm cable, um, but generally a switchboard will come supplied with an MEN link of some description. Then you also have some blanks, there's lots of different kinds of blanks, but they just go in there, or pole fillers, whichever ones you want to call them. This here is one of those um, RCD bars that I was talking about, so you could put that in there and then your neutrals could just come into those terminations instead, but I would still prefer to put them on a bar than to put them in one of these. This kind of gets in the way, it's a little messy. So lastly, uh, with your stickers and labels on the outside of your boards, the rigs do call for more than just power and lights, and so I generally would go um, power and lights on the bottom with RCD and then on the top I'd say like lounge so you'd know that it's lounge lights, uh, lounge power and lounge lights over here. It gives the customer a way better grasp of what um, MZBs and circuit breakers control what in their house rather than just guessing, you know, oh, where's the power, what's off, what's on. Now obviously you've seen me use a whole bunch of different tools to do this. Um, and there's no single way to do it. I think there's lots of different ways and to be honest I don't think any are more or less right or wrong um, But I hope you've learned something and uh, hit me up in the comments if you've got any questions But thanks for watching and follow for more from an NZ Tradie